ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಸದಾಶಿವ ಸಮಾರಂಭಾ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾ ಸದ್ಗುರುಚರಣಾರವಿಂದಾಭ್ಯಾ ನಮಃ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಸೂತ್ರ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ತ್ರೀ ಪಾದ ಫೋರ್ ಪುರುಷಾರ್ಥಾಧಿಕರಣ ಪುರುಷಾರ್ಥೋತ ಶಬ್ದಿತಿ ಬಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೇಷತ್ವಾತ್ ಪುರುಷಾರ್ಥವಾದ ಯಥಾಷು ಜೈಮಿನಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಪಾದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ರನ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಸೂತ್ರ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬಿನ್ ಸೀಯಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಪಾದ ಆಫ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾಂಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ವಿ ಸೆಟ್ ದಟ್ ಇನ್ ಪೂರ್ವ ಮೀಮಾಂಸ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಬಿಗ್ ಡಿಬೇಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಟು ಹೌ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾಂಡಲ್ ದಿ ವೇದ ವಾಕ್ಯಾಸ್ ಲಾಜಿಕಲಿ ಅಂಗಂ ಆರ್ ಪಾರ್ ಶುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎನಿ ಫಲ ಬೈ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅಲ್ logically but vedically anga is given a phala and this is discussed in purva mimamsa adhikaranam which i mentioned in the last class we have to utilize this adhikaranam from purva mimamsa in brahma sutra adhikaranam that we are discussing now therefore i will briefly mention what occurs in purva mimamsa and it is called parnamayi adhikaranam and this adhikaranam of purva mimamsa analyzes a veda vakyam which says yasya parnamayi juhur bhavati na saha paapam shlokam shrunoti that is the sentence yasya parnamayi juhur bhavati na saha paapam shlokam shrunoti saha paapam shlokam na shrunoti it should be rearranged so the meaning of this vakyam is a vedic ritualist whenever he performs a ritual he has to use a particular ladle or wooden spoon to offer the oblations into the fire and this spoon is referred to in this mantra as juhu so the veda says parnamayi juhu bhavati the spoon should be made of phalasa tree in the in this context because the phalasa vriksha is used for making several things and this spoon also wooden spoon should be made of that tree so parnamayi means made out of phalasa tree that is samskrita dravyam bhavati samskrita means not the not the language here some prakritam is natural samskritam is refined so refined dravyam bhavati it becomes a refined samskrita karmanga dravyam it becomes that material becomes refined by this process so the wooden ladle and its samskara making out of appropriate tree and anga they are all part of accessories of this particular in this particular ritual so they can become angam only it has to be logically nishpalam because it is only a part it should be nishpalam where it cannot give any result as it cannot produce any result because it is a part however here veda gives a phalam for it and the phalam is papa shloka ashravana ya papa shloka ashravanam is the phalam papa shlokam means negative news na shrunoti that yajamana who performs this yajna who uses the parnamayi ladle will not hear dukkha news yani dukkha news he will not hear yani bad news he will only hear mangala shravana so in the parnamayi adhikaranam they have analyzed what to do with the phala vakyam the phala mentioned there should not be taken literally really speaking it is nishpalam only they then why is phala mentioned there it is only to encourage and impress upon the yajamana not to use any other juhu not to use any other material but to use only this particular material we should not take it as a phala vakyam as it is only an arthavada vakyam the result will come only when the ladle is used in the ritual and ladle will then contribute in the final ritual mentioned in the veda therefore they have to come with a general role anga phala bodaka vakyam is arthavada is only a statement it's only an exaggeration which promises phalam for karma anga 
So Angi Palabodaga Vakyam is only Palavakyam, only the karma will give the palam, not any instruments, any part. Since this law is established in Parnamayi Adhikaranam, it is called the Parnamani, Parnamayi Nyaya also. <laughs> there is a name also for this Nyaya logic. It is Parnamayi Nyaya. So it is a law. It is Anga Palabodaga Vakyam Arthavadaha, which we saw, that is quoted here. And this we have to apply in Atma Jnanam in this discussion. So Purva Mimamsa says, Atma Jnana Palabodaka Vakyam is also an Arthavada only, like Parnami Vakyavada. Parnamayim Vakyavada, it is also like a, it's only a part. So it is also similar to that. So Atma Jnanam is also an Angam only. Who says all this? Purva Mimamsa, don't confuse. It's not Siddhanti saying, Purva Mimamsa says, Atma Jnanam also is an Angam and Atma Jnana Bodhaka Vakyam. Karma Angatvat, it is also part of the ritual. He argues, without Atma Jnanam, a person can never become an Yajamana of a Vedic ritual. So a person who does a ritual should have enough knowledge. He should have Atma Jnanam. We are going to see all these differences of what Atma Jnanam means at all later. In fact, Atma Jnanam alone makes him eligible for a karma. <laughs> See, look at that, be very confusing. We all say by doing karma, by doing karma yoga, you get Chitta Shuddhi and all, and then you go on Shravanam, Mananam, Nididhyasanam to gain Atma Jnanam. That is our route. Whereas what he says is, you have to have Atma Jnanam alone. That alone makes you eligible to do karma. Yajamana is one of the karma angas only. He is also one of the accessories to do karma. Without kartra, karaka, how karakam can come? So just as, for example, if you take a bilva tree, bilva, bilva leaves, they require prokshana samskara. Before you use the bilva leaves to do archana to Lord Shiva, you are supposed to do prokshana to, it's a prokshana samskara to purify the bilva leaves. The ritual is, he, it needs a samskara. And Atma Jnanam alone makes him a samskrita purusha to perform a ritual. because. For him, from whatever uh, uh, this thing he is trying to do, if he has to be a refined person, purified person, for him to perform a ritual, he should have Atma Jnanam alone. That makes him a Samskrita Purushaha, a refined person, a purified person to perform a ritual. And most of the Vedic rituals, they talk about attainment of higher loka prapti. Many of the Shraudha Yajnas, they all promise so many higher lokas, even in Katopanishad. See, um, um, Nachiken's father, he did this particular yajna to gain higher lokas. Also, he talks about Purva Janma, Papa Nasha also. Whatever Papas were there from the Purva Janma, they are also getting destroyed. So it means if I look upon myself as the body, I know at the time of death, I will be finished on death because it will be end. Body will go away. Therefore, I can never talk about going to another loka at all because body is gone. If I talk of, if I think of myself as a body, so a materialist will never accept Swarga loka, Naraka loka, all that. He will not uh, perform any Shraddha karmas. Also, he will say, "Father is dead and gone." That is the question of going to some other loka and all that. Why do all the shraddhas and all? He will not believe in paraloka. He cannot perform any vaidika karmas, either for his ancestors or for his own gati. So this is the philosophy only. If this is possible, only if I believe that I am different from the body. Otherwise, he will go that route only, will not perform any of those karmas. This happens only when I accept that is, I am Deha Vyatirikta Atma, different from the body. And people ask, which is the proof for the existence of Swarga and Naraka? And therefore, the performance of Shraddha is reducing also. A lot of people ask this question. Where is the proof for the existence of Swarga Loka, Naraka Loka and all that? So Shraddha for the performance of all these rituals also are going away. They do not accept this Atma, traveling body and all that. Purva Mimamsaka argues, only if you accept Atma, you will accept Punya Papa and Swarga and Naraka. Only when you accept Atma. That means Atma Jnanam, that only makes a person eligible for religious activity. You know his argument. He is coming the other way. 
Atmajnanam alone makes you eligible for religious activity, any karma. Then Atmajnanam becomes karma anga samskara. That is his logic. Faith in Veda Pramana and faith in the knowledge that I am different from the body makes a person eligible for Vaidika karma. And another point, like the Parnamayi Vakyam, since it is a karmanga phalam, all the vakyas are arthavada vakyas only. After listening, don't do any ritual and all. This is only an appetizer for yajna anushtanam. Atma jnanam is required for vaidika karma. Therefore, atma jnanam is karma angam and is nishpalam by itself. Atma jnanam does not give you any benefit by itself. Purmi Mamsa says. Then the fourth point he gives is, Atma Jnana Palavakyam is Arthavada only. If you are talking about any benefit for gaining Atma Jnana, it is only Arthavada. It is only glorification. All Pramana Vakyas quoted by Siddhanta are said to be only Arthavakyam by Purvamimamsakas. So they, they do not support Siddhanta as per Jaimini. We are talking about Jaimini, if you remember. Context is that. So the attainment of Swarga, that alone is moksha as far as Purumi Mamsa is concerned. So going to heaven is seen as moksha or eternity as, from, as per Purumi Mamsa. This is the general analysis of the second sutra. Now let us do the word analysis. Seshatvatim purusharthavadaha yatha anyeshu iti jaiminihi. Seshatvat. Since the self is connected with karma, purusharthavada, such statements of direct benefit are only figurative, they are only arthavada, seshatva. Yata anyeshu, as in other cases, iti jaimini, this is the view of jaimini. And there is some incidental point also which we need to understand. Vyasacharya, I mentioned this earlier, but I will again reiterate that. Vyasacharya is supposed to be the guru of Jaimini and Jaimini is his Sishya. If Sishya becomes Purupakshi of Guru, then is it a credit to the Guru or is it a discredit? After elaborate teaching, if Jaimini says Jnanam is Nishpalam, it is a fundamental mistake by Sishya of Vyasacharya. This is the worry of some of the other sub-commentators. Shankaracharya doesn't bother about it, but sub-commentators, some of them raise this issue. And Jaimini is not a real Purupakshi at all. He knows Vedanta very well, and he knows Atma Jnanam will give Moksha very well. But still, to show that this discussion must be, must be in the form of a guru Shishya dialogue, Vyasacharya and Jaimini names are given in this particular sutra. That is what is said by some of these commentators. Jaimini is seen to be acting as a Purupakshi. Now let us look at this an incidental point. We don't have to put too much emphasis on that. Now let us go to the significance of the words. Seshatvat. Seshatvat, here it means Angatvat. It is a Vaidika Karma Angam. It is an organ. It is a part of the Vaidika Karma. Atma Jnanam is Vaidika Karma Anga. Atma Jnanam is only a Vaidika Karma Anga part. Therefore, Atma Jnanam is Nishpalam. It doesn't have any benefit by itself. And Purushartha. Purushartha means Moksha Palam. And Purushartha Vada means Vedic statement here. Therefore, Purushartha Vada means Vedic statement that mentions Moksha Palam for Jnanam. That is Artha Vada. It means to not to be taken seriously. It is only Arthavat. Since self-knowledge is a part of a ritual, wherever result is mentioned for self-knowledge, then that should be taken only as figurative and not as factual. So, Yatha Anyeshu, that means as in other instances, like other instances, what he has in mind? Like the Parnamayi Vakyam that we just read. Parnamayi Juhor Bhavati. So that's what we have to take. That vakyam is kept in mind. So that vakyam is Pala Bodaka vakyam. So that Veda vakyam is Arthavada. Actually, Shankaracharya gives three different instances in his Bhashyam, but did not give all the three examples, though. One more interesting example also is 
yasya parnamayi juhur bhavati na saha papam shlokam shrunoti that is what we just read then yadhante chakshureva varma yajamanasya vrinte that is another one and yat prayaja anujaya ijyante varma va etat yagnasya kriyate bratru vyabhi buddhye that is another one so according to veda vedic i am not going to discussion of any of those i am just only telling that these things exist in sankras bhashya so according to veda a vedic ritualist has to apply the kolerium what is called it like in tamil we call it kanmai some the eyeliner or something you know i don't know whatever is called in other languages they normally apply this to the eyes and that is at the time of a ritual they are supposed to put all these things they uh, in the eyes and that is presented as karma anga it is part of the karma and incidentally also this at the time of wedding people might have noticed the in, in south indian marriages there is a particular uh, even called the kashi yatra the boy is way laid by the girl's family he is going to go to kashi and all that thing and when the boy goes the kanmai the 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 eye liner is supplied for drishti because people normally feel you know the the you know the all the people make may cast the rice on you and all that thing so they put all this kanmai and all that thing to as a as a kind of uh, to absolve of all the ill effects of all those things so for this there is veda vakyam also that is entry into grahastha ashrama is entry into vedic ritual so entry that is why in this kanmai putting this kolerium and all that thing also there is veda vakyam for all this that symbolizes grahastha ashrama now that is grahastha ashrama means the person becomes an uh, eligible to do all these vedic rituals here this example is quoted this application of anjana that is this kanmai is karma angam it is part of the ritual and does not have any result by itself yet veda gives a result and it is yajamana samskara it is it is a purificatory step for the yajamana the boy the bride groom this also should be taken only as an arthavada vakyam only not as a figurative vakyam only without having any palam directly by itself therefore yatha anyesho iti jaimini so this is the view of jaimini maharishi he is functioning as purva pakshi here to vyasa acharya yet he is an advaitin only and he takes the role of purva pakshi but he is not really a purva pakshi that we should understand if you understand that much is adequate now let us go to the third sutra aachara darshanat aachara darshanat third sutra fourth pada third chapter 428 running brahma sutra first let us see the general analysis of this sutra here purva pakshi argument is that veda talks about the lifestyle of many gnanis like janaka janaka is supposed to be a brahma gnani and veda talks about the lifestyle of several of such gnanis i told ashwapati also once kaikeyi's father is a gnani these are all great scholars even though they are kshatriya kings they are gnanis atma gnanis brahma gnanis and janaka was a great gnani as seen from bragadaranika upanishad we saw all these various sections yagya valkya and all those discussions in in bragadaranika in detail and in the veda it is said janaka performs many yagas yagnas kedas and in bragadaranyaka third chapter first section first mantra the very beginning is he has performed very very big yagas involving big dakshinas also yaga means not just only yaga it involves lot of dakshinas also that means janaka was a great ritualist and a great gnani also he is a great gnani atma gnani great advaitin and at the same time he is a great ritualist also janako havai deho janako kham bai deho bahu dakshinena yagene je bahu dakshinena he gave lot of dakshinas tatra kham kuru panchalanam brahmana abhisameta babuhu babuhu tasya kha janakasya vaidehasya vijignasa babuva kha swidesham brahmananam anuchanatamiti tamaiti saha gavagum sahasargum avarurodam dasha dasha pada ekaikasya ha shringayo ho avadha babuhu every horn of the cows that he was giving thousands of them he was giving as danam gift he covered those thing with all the silver silver kind of kavacham he put all those ornaments on the on the horns of those cows and gave as danam to all those all those brahmanas 
So from this, it is clear that Janaka used Jnanam as Karma Angam and he had regular rituals. So he used his Jnanam knowledge as only a Karma Angam, as a part of the Karma for doing very regular rituals, a lot of Yagas. He wanted to boost his Karma with the teachings. That's what he wanted to do. That is how it is interpreted here by the Purmi Mamsa. So lifestyle of a Jnani supports our view is the view of Jaimini. Now let us go to the word analysis. Achara Darshanat, that is the Sutra. Achara Darshanat means to the scriptural reference. Darshanam refers to the scriptural reference to the performance of karma by Jnanis. If you want to refer to that, it means it says Jnana means karmangam is only part. This is the running meaning. Now let us see the significance of the words. Achara and Darshanat are two words. Acharaha means Jnaninam, Karma, Karma Anushtana. Actually, whatever Anushtana they are following. That is the Achara. Performance of Vedic rituals of great Jnanis like Janaka. Darshanath. We come to know or we understand from all of them. We do know of Janaka performing a lot of rituals from Brahadaranyaka we are seeing. And we learn through Veda Pramanam also. Therefore, Kevala Jnanam does not give moksha. He is a Jnani. But he does a lot of karma. So along learn Vedanta, continue Vedic ritual systematically and elaborately. That's what Janaka did. That is the argument. So without that, knowledge will not give liberation. This is the argument of the Purvi Mamsaka. Now let us go to the next sutra. Tashrutehe. These are all simple sutras, simple sutras. Fourth sutra, fourth father, third chapter, 429th running Brahma Sutra. The Shruti also says, the Shruti, Shruti also says that Vidya is an Anga of Karma. Vidya means knowledge. Atman Gyanam here is an Anga of Karma. First, let us see the general analysis of the Sutra. Purupakshi says that Veda very clearly indicates that Vidya or Atman Gyanam here is an Anga, is only a part. And he gives Chandogya Upanishad. First chapter, first section, tenth mantra, as his quotation. Yadeva vidyaya karoti shraddaya upanishada tadeva viryavatharam bhavati. We have quoted this mantra earlier also. It says, whatever ritual you do, do it with jnanam. Yadeva vidyaya karoti. Do it with jnanam. From, from this it is clear, with jnanam, when karma is performed, karma will give more benefits. The very same karma supported by jnanam is more efficacious. Purvimamsa further argues, the mere karma will give finite result and karma with vidya, with jnanam, will give nitya phalam or even moksha. So this is the argument of the Purvapakshi here. Therefore, Purupakshi is a Purumimamsaka. Therefore, Jnanam Karmanaha Anga. According to them, Jnanam is only part of Karma. This is the general analysis of this Sutra. Now, let us see the word analysis. Tashrutehe. Since this is mentioned in the Shruti itself, which is what is mentioned, Jnanam is Karma Anga. Therefore, jnana is nishpalam because it's only a part of a karma. It is by itself nishpalam and it is arthavada vakyam and therefore pratigna given in the first sutra is wrong. That is their contention. Pratigna given in the first sutra of this particular thing is wrong. Now, I will give you the significance of the words now. Tashrutehe. Tashrutehe means shrutehe means shruti pramana, veda pramana. That means this idea. This idea that jnanam only enhances the result of karma and it does not do anything by itself and such an idea is given in the Shruti statement that he quotes from Chandogya Upanishad, first chapter, first section, 10th mantra that he just read. This is his contention. Let us go to the next sutra. Samanvaram Bhanath. Samanvaram Bhanath. Fifth sutra, fourth pada, third chapter, 430th running from a sutra. Here Purupakshi continues and he gives further support also. In the previous sutra, he gave the support from Chandogya. And first, let us do the general analysis of this small sutra also. Purupakshi refers to here 
a mantra from Brigadaranyaka Upanishad, from the fourth chapter, fourth section, second mantra. And this mantra talks about the Jeevatma leaving the body at the time of death. Jeevatma leaving the body at the time of death is what is talked about. Savigyano Bhavati, Savigyana Mevan, Anvavakramati, Tam Vidya Karmani, Samanvara Bhete, Purva Pragnacha. The departing soul is followed by the knowledge and the work. Tam Vidya Karmani. Vidya is knowledge and Karmani is all the work. That is the palam of the Karma Pala. That is what is said here in the Abhishti Vakyam, in the Brigadaranika Vakyam that we just read. Prana, etc. also go through the whole body. We already know the Sukhsha goes, all that thing goes. That Jivatma is accompanied by three things, a bundle, Vidya is Jnanam, Karmani, Karmas, and the Pura Prajna, the Vasanas. All of them, they all go. And incidentally, we have to understand one small difference also. I make such statements one here because it may otherwise have confusion. So the difference between Karma Palam and Vasanas, we should understand. Even though both are generated by karma, vasanas are also generated by karma, and karma palam also is generated by karma. For example, when, they, uh, when a person regularly he takes coffee, let us say, and because of the regularly taking habit, I get habituated to coffee. This habit is called vasana. Our tendency to repeat is vasana. Similarly, people have other habits like smoking habit, drinking habit, all this. Whereas damage done by taking something, either coffee or liquor or any of those things, done to the system that is called the karma phala, which will be there and continue even I break the even if I break the vasana, that damage is still done. Sometimes you may stop the karma phala and vasana may continue. Sometimes you may stop vasana, but karma phala may continue. Therefore, Purupakshi says, jnanam is never independent and it goes along with karma. That is his argument. Jnanam is never independent, it goes along with karma. This is the general analysis of this sutra. Now let us see the word analysis. Samanvaram bhanat. Since karma and jnanam go together along with jiva, that is, jnanam is karma. We should, don't confuse with our atma jnanam, our, our siddhant is topic. We are talking about purumyamsa. The significance, of, see now here is the, the, the jiva, along with the jiva, karma and jnanam go together. Jnanam is karmangam here. Now, if you look at this, the words, samanvaram banam means saha gamanam. It means saha gamanam means traveling together. So Vyasacharya, he wants to remind of the Brihadaranika Upanishad Vakyam 444, 4.4.4 that we read, where the verb used is Samanvara Bete. Tam Vidya Karmani Samanvara Bete Purva Pragnacha. That is the mantra in Brihadaranika. Samanvara Bete. Both go together with Jivatma. There is no Swatantra Jnanam and it always goes together. That is why this Samanvara Bete is important here. No Swatantra Jnanam at all. It goes along with the other things. They go together. So this is another contention that Bapur Mimamsa makes. Let us go to the next sutra. Tadvato Vidhanat. Tadvato Vidhanat. Sixth Sutra, Fourth Pada, Third Chapter, 431st Spending Brahma Sutra. This is another small and a simple sutra also. Here, Purva Pakshi further reinforces the, his conclusion. He refers to another Veda Mantra here, taken from Chandogya Upanishad, 8th chapter, 15th section, first mantra. And in this mantra, the content is what the Vaidika should do in life. That is the content of this mantra. Acharya Kulad Vedam Aditya. Acharya Kulad Vedam Aditya. Yatha vidhanam guroho karmati sheshena abhisamavritya, abhisamavritya. Kudumbe suchev deshe swadhyayam adhiyanaha. It says that the person should be properly educated from a proper acharya, acharya kulad vedam aditya. Both in terms of laukika knowledge and spiritual knowledge, both. 
only then he will have all the four purusharthas dharma artha kama moksha promoting secular knowledge he will have only one knowledge that is earned and entertained that's what he will do even for five days earned for five days and entertained for one day all i mean that kind of thing people have all those right so even if you teach them yoga they will use yoga to enhance the entertainment value only therefore veda says not to commit that mistake and it teaches to have both laukika vidya and vedanta vidya and have dharma and moksha and design the life to have artha kama pradhana in the initial stages and then slowly it should turn to dharma and moksha pradhana that is the style therefore purupakshi says one should have veda gnanam in the beginning and veda gnanam is atma gnanam in brahmacharya ashrama itself and then one should get married so once or a person should gain that knowledge and then only he should get married and then go into all this rituals and all this by the karmas then one should according to chandogya upanishad after atma gyanam he should enter grahastha ashrama with atma gyanam he should perform all actions all vaidika karmani in the grahastha ashram read vedam do all karma in essence in a, that is the essence of all these mantras read vedam and then get knowledge and then do all the karmas and purupakshi says gain atma gnanam and perform the rituals and from this it becomes clear that atma gnanam is necessary for performance of vedic rituals atma gnanam is is necessary for performance of vedic rituals this is the general analysis of this sutra now let us go to the word analysis tad vato vidhanat vidhanat means since karma is prescribed vidana vidana has been prescribed tadvataha for a person this vedic knowledge atma gnanam is karmangam here that's what is implied atma gnanam is karmangam this vedic knowledge and this is the running meaning and vidhanam refers to since veda has prescribed that one should do karma and karma performance become is compulsory tadvataha that means veda gnanavan a person who is veda gnanavan who has learned so purupakshi assumes veda gnanam is atma gnanam here therefore atma gnanam is a qualification for karma is his contention and without qualification one should do karma that is with, with one should not do karma without that qualification or with this qualification only one should do karma what is the qualification one should have gnanam atma gnanam now let us go to the next sutra niyama acha we have to, we should not lose track all our purva mimamsis are arguments niyama acha seventh sutra fourth part fourth part of third chapter 432nd running mimam sutra the argument begin in sutra 2 that is concluded here from sutra 2 to 7 i mentioned they are all purva paksha sutras first let us see the general analysis sutra here purva paksha points out that shruti says that every sadaka should perform vaidika karma throughout the life every sadaka has to perform vaidika karma throughout the life karma cannot be renounced any time karma tyaga should not be done until death karma has to be done and this is given also in isa vashya upanishad from second mantra kurvanne veha karmani jiji vishechcha dakam samaha evam tvayi nanyate tosti na karma lipyate nare we have seen all these mantras in detail during our isha vashya discussion so agnihotra is a sacrifice lasting to live by 100 years one should perform karma to live long go on doing agnihotra every day let us live 100 years doing karma so from this it is clear kevala gnanam does not exist at all and karma is there throughout the life it is gnana sahita karma karma along with gnana so no time when karma is absent always karma is done logic also supports this view therefore vedic injunction says karma should be eternally done and hence atma gnanam is karma angam alone it is only part of karma now let us see the word analysis of this sutra niyamacha these are all one word sutras 
niyama acha because of vedic injunction also niyama this is confirmed we have to supply now we'll see the significance of the words niyama acha niyama means vidhi and vidhi means commandment the conclusion is that that is confirmed that is confirmed command it means purva paksha says that my argument is confirmed a person should be doing ritual until death and he should do it with knowledge atmagyan atmagyanam is karma angam it is part of karma cha means also that the present argument is also added to the arguments given earlier also in the previous sutras from 2 to 6 i am adding this also seventh also so this chat comes it is also added to the same argument that is his contention now let us go to the next sutra sutra 8 adhika upadeshatu badarayanasya evam tad darshanat atiko upadeshatu badarayanasya evam tad darshanat 8 sutra fourth pad third chapter 433rd running brahm sutra First, let us see the general analysis of this sutra. Here, Vyasa Acharya he starts to answer Puru Pakshi. He gives answers point to point to Puru Pakshi. The second sutra is reputed here. We said from second to seventh sutra are all Puru Pakshi sutras. So here, Vyasa Acharya refutes the second sutra. And the argument given by Puru Pakshi is what? anything used for refinement of accessories of karma or vedic ritual will not produce any result by itself we already said in the beginning we took the palasa that ladle and all that so anything used for refinement of accessories of karma or vedic ritual will not produce any result by itself so the result will be produced after the completion of the ritual only using all the accessories it is swayam nishphala the anga itself will not give phalam by itself and puru pakshi argues that atmagnyanam is a samskara karma which will refine a vedic ritual only yajamana develops knowledge that i am not the body i am the atma different from the body and he, then he does the ritual with full faith that i am different from the body look at this he is doing the ritual with the full understanding i am different from the body and then alone one is attracted to the karma and karma phalam because his intention is always to make person attached to karmas and karma phalams so he gets attracted to karma and karma phalam by that knowledge this is all done to gain superior lokas all this punya lokas so materialist with no gnanam will say that all rituals are redundant only if i know that i survive and travel after death if that knowledge is there then only it will add punyam to jeeva and it will help gaining high it help it to gain higher lokas so knowledge is needed i am different from the body the body is this physical body is gone after death this sukh mutter and travels all that he knows that he knows with that knowledge and purun mamsa says they have very the gnanam is vaidika karma in all of them gnanam will not give any phalam by itself it will help vaidika karmas and that alone will give phalam the karma alone will give phalam since karma karma anga gnanam is nishphalam that is karma anga gnanam means the, part, the karma angas that gnanam is nishphalam if at all if any phalam is given in the sutra all phalams are arthavada only they are only glorification vakyas they are not they are figurative vakyas they should not be taken serious this is in short the argument of the purma mimamsa now vyasa acharya he gives the answer and he says veda gives atmagnanam that atma is different from the body but the truth is that there are two types of atmagnanam one type is predominantly purva bhaga veda and the second is the deha vyatirikta atma is dealt with in the vedanta bhaga or the jnana kanda so one jnanam is given in the purva bhaga karma kanda portion and the another one is given in the jnana kanda portion so karma kanda they those people karma kandis have not understood this they are thinking only that jnanam they are that's the final jnana they mix up and they get confused that is vyasa acharya's contention so the two deha vyatirikta atmas of which one of them is parichitta karta atma 
Parichindakarta means the one who is separate, who is divided from the, from the Atma, the body. And this alone is famously known as the traveling soul. We call it the traveling soul. The composition of this Atma is made up of what? Sushma Shariram, Karna Shariram, Chidabhasa, reflected consciousness, and Chit is included, but it does not travel because Chit is all pervading. The original consciousness is all pervading, that is the Chaitanyam. Chit is all pervading, and Sarva Gadatva Deva it doesn't travel. But Parichinna Karta Atma is Sukshma Sharira and Karna Sharira and Chidabhasa, this bundle that leaves the body. It is generally translate, translated as departed traveling soul. In English, they normally write it as departed, departing, traveling soul and all that at death. And it requires Shraddham, Tarpanam and all those things that requires. Then Vyasacharya says that there is another Dehvirikta Atma predominantly discussed in Jnana Kanda, which is ignored by Karma Kandis. In Veda, there is fertile and barren portion. Fertile portion is what? Karma Kanda. Because you do a lot of karmas and you get a lot of palam. You achieve so many goals, so many nice things. So it is a very fertile portion. You do a lot of karmas. But there is a dry portion called this Jnana Kanda. Nothing to do, only to own up. So unfortunately, this Jnana Kanda, that is referring to the Atma number two, Atma Jnanam number two, the Chit Amsha, excluding the Sushma Shariram, Karna Shariram, excluding Chida Basa, all these are ignored by the Purumimam Sakas. So Chit is what? It is Akarta, Atma. Then Vyasacharya argues that first Atma is Karmangam as it is a Karta. Karta is one of the six Karakas. So the Atma, this, this Atma, there is a Karta Atma, that is number one Atma, that is Anga, and Yajamana Samskara is useful for Vedic Karma, for all that. But the second Akarta Atma can never be Karmangam because that Akarta is, that Atma is, that is the Atma Jnanam, that is Akarta. Atma Jnanam is what? Akarta Abhokta. Never be Karmanga. So Akarta Atma is not Karmanga. And the second Atma Jnanam does not refine Karta. Second Atma Jnanam does not refine Karta. And on the other hand, it destroys the very Karta. Karta becomes Akarta. Bhokta becomes Abhokta. At the instance of Atma Jnanam. So first Atma Jnanam, what it does? It is done by the Akartha Atma. And the second Atma Jnana refers to, it refutes the, it refines the Kartha to Akartha and destroys the very Kartha. So first Atma Jnana will refine Akartha and the second will destroy Kartha. If you want to understand it then. In, in, in simple terms, first Atma Jnana, which the Karma Kandi refers to, Purvamimamsaka refers to, that refines the Kartha all right, but the second destroys the very karta. And therefore we say second Atma Jnanam is not Karmangam at all. Because it destroys the very karta himself. That Atma Jnanam promises Palam and that Vakyam cannot be Karmangam. Your problem is what? Because you apply Pranamayi Adhikaranam. You must, you must remember we are coming from the Pranamayi Adhikaranam. In the Purvami Mamsa we already mentioned. So you apply the Pranamayi Adhikaranam wrongly. And Vyasacharya says, study Vedanta because every other mantra talks of a Parichinna Atma, Yahivadirikta Atma. For instance, in Katopanishad also, first, section, first chapter, second section, 18th mantra, Najayate, Mriyate, Vipaschite, Nayam Kutaschinna, Babuva Kaschite, Ajonitya, Shashoto, Yampurana, Nahanyate, Hanyamane, Sharire. The same line, um, um, Lord Krishna borrowed in Bhagavad Gita also. This mantra talks about the Dehivetrikta Akartha Atma. And in the next mantra also it is said that Atma is Akartha and Abhokta and Katopanish itself. Khanta chen manyate hantum, khatas chen manyate hatam, ubauta una vijani to nayam khanti na hanyate. So after knowing I am Akartha, how can I ever be interested in Vaidika Karma? Once I know I am Akartha, Abhokta, how can I ever be interested in Karma at all? This is the technical answer given by Vyasacharya and his sutra. Now let us see the word analysis of this sutra. First let us see the running meaning. Adhika upadeshatthu 
ಬಾದರಾಯಣಸ್ಯ ಏವಂ ತದ್ದರ್ಶನಾತ್ ಅಧಿಕ ಉಪದೇಶಾತ್ ತು ತು ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸೋ ವ್ಯಾಸಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ರೆಫ್ಯೂಟಿಂಗ್ ಜೈಮಿನಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ಸೊ ಅಧಿಕ ಉಪದೇಶಾತ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಎ ಸುಪೀರಿಯರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಈಸ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ವೇದಾನ್ ಸುಪೀರಿಯರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಉಪದೇಶ ಆದ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಅಧಿಕ ಉಪದೇಶ ಸುಪೀರಿಯರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಈಸ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ಬಾದರಾಯಣಸ್ಯ ದ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ವ್ಯಾಸಾಚಾರ್ಯ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಿ ಹವ್ ಟು ಸಪ್ಲೈ ಇಸ್ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ತದ್ ದರ್ಶನಾತ್ ಸಿನ್ ಸುಪೀರಿಯರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಈಸ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ಲಿ ರಿವೀಲ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಪ್ಲೈ ತದ್ ದರ್ಶನಾತ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟೆಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಮೀನ್ ನಾವು ಲೆಟ್ ಸಿ ದಿ ಸಿಗ್ನಿಫಿಕೆನ್ಸ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಐ ಟೋಲ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಪೂರ್ವ ಪಕ್ಷಿ ರೆಫ್ಯೂಟೇಶನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ರೆಫ್ಯೂಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಗ್ರಿ ವಿತ್ ದ ಪೂರ್ವ ಪಕ್ಷಿ ಅಧಿಕ ಉಪದೇಶಾತ್ ಅಧಿಕ ಉಪದೇಶ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ಸುಪೀರಿಯರ್ ಆತ್ಮ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಆತ್ಮ ಆಫ್ ಕರ್ಮಕಾಂಡಿ ಸುಪೀರಿಯರ್ ಆತ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ದ ಜ್ಞಾನಕಾಂಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಆತ್ಮ ಜಾಗ ವ್ಯತಿರಿಕ್ತ ಆತ್ಮ ಆತ್ಮ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ಸೊ ಆತ್ಮ ಆಫ್ ಕರ್ಮಕಾಂಡಿ ಸೊ ವೇದಾಂತ ಇನ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಜೀವಾತ್ಮ ಇನ್ ಅ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಕಾಂಟೆಕ್ಸ್ ಜೀವಾತ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ವಿತ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ಇನ್ ಸೇಮ್ the difference between karmakanda jeevatma and jnana kanda jeevatma is what one is parichinna karta jeevatma and other is aparichinna akarta jeevatma evam evam means in this manner that is based on the new information that there are two atmas two jeevatmas and when i say jeevatma is purushaha or stree i refer to as gender centered jeevatma when i say jeevatma is purushaha or stree or any of those then i refer to gender centered jeevatma karma is performed by sharira body the moment i want to do ritual where i come to i come to body level the moment i want to do karma i come to body level similarly when we talk about traveling after death we take sukshma shariram the chida basa has to be included all the karana shariram all that and when i say you are nitya brahman at that time we talk about atma the chaitanya eva means thus such such is the opinion atma gyanam gives liberation this is what we supply and and understand that's what badarayanasya the teaching of veda veda vyasa is correct and the second atma taught in veda is clearly found in the upanishads and the mantra kept in mind is what kato upanishad mantra that we just read therefore jaimini is wrong in this context is the conclusion so in karma kanda atma gnanam refers to dega parichinna karmangam only it refers to i can do shraddham tarpanam all that if i feel other than the body there is an ancestor soul which has traveled to kaya lokas then i do all these shraddhams and all whatever lokas he has gone to it has to go to him in the appropriate form so i do tarpanam i do shraddham because i have faith in the vedas they are ashrauta karma they all prescribe all of them and our argument is that atma vidya is not understood clearly by the purva mamsakam when purva paksha refers to atma vidya it is atma vidya number 1 obtaining in karma kanda and we talk of atma vidya number 2 obtaining in jnana kanda atma vidya number 1 is what is the kartru atma the doer atma and that gnana that atma vidya gnana as the doer and what we say vidantins talk about is the akartru atma gnanam the gnanam that gives you the knowledge that you are akartha abhokta and our conclusion is atma gnanam number 2 is not karmangam atma gnanam number 1 may be karmangam but atma gnanam number 2 is not karmangam because karta himself is destroyed as i mentioned now let us enter to the next sutra sutra number 9 tulyam tu darshanam tulyam tu darshanam 9th sutra 4th pada 3rd chapter 434th running brahma sutra first let us do the general analysis of this sutra this answers the purva pakshi argument given in sutra 3 second sutra was refuted in the previous sutra and third sutra of the purva pakshi is refuted here the number sutra number 3 of this particular article is refuted here now let's see what is said in sutra 3 purva pakshi there quoted a vakyam from bragadarnya upanishad third chapter 
first section, first mantra, where it is said that Janaka and Atma Jnani performed Yagas. We saw that section, I read that mantra also. And we saw that Brigadaranika mantra, when we did the Achara Darshanat Sutra, we already saw that in that context, I quoted that Brigadaranika mantra in the, in the Sutra Achara Darshanat. Achara means what? Janakadi Jnani Nam Acharaha. All those Acharyas, Jnanis also, they have grasped the ashramas and they performed Vaidya Karmas, lot of those things they did. All those Acharas followed by those Jnanis. This Achara refers to all of, all of them. So Atma Jnanam was an Angam of Vaidika Karma was the contention at that time. This is the Purva Pakshi's contention based on the Prigadharanika Mantra, third chapter, first section, first mantra that we read. And the answer to that is given in this sutra by Vyasa Acharya. So if you quote one mantra, <laughs> all about the Grahastha Jnani, then what Vyasa Acharya says is, I will quote Sanyasi Jnani. You are talking about Grahastha Jnani, fine. But I can talk about Sanyasi Jnani, where Vaidya Karmas are not there at all. Both are Jnanis. One is Grahastha Ashrami Jnani, another is Sanyasa Ashrami Jnani. And if you take Karma as a, as a Pradhanam, then Sanyasi doesn't have any Karma at all. He's a Jnani. So in the case of Sanyasis, there is no Vaidya Karmas at all. So from that it is clear that Jnanam is not Karma Angam. As in the case of Sanyasis, there is no Karma Angam at all. So since Vedic support is Tulyam, Tulyam means equal for you and me, you are also quoting Vedic support, I am also quoting Vedic support, so it is Tulyam, support is equal, so both cannot win by the Vedic quotation. So you cannot also quote one and win, I cannot also, because both are equal. Now the question is, what is the Vedic quotation we give in support of our argument? And Shankaracharya says, that Brahadarni Upanishad is full of sannyasa. Lot of those things are there. The example he gives is the Kahola Brahmanam. The first mantra, we have read this earlier also in some other context. Third chapter, fifth Brahmanam. Here is the first mantra, Kahola Brahmanam. After gaining Atma Jnanam, the Upanishad says, these Jnanis give up all karmas and live on bhiksha and lead a life of sannyasins. Atmanam viditva brahmanaha putraishanayascha vittaishanayascha lokaishanayascha vyuttaya atam bhikshacharyam charanti. Take it, stick to bhikshacharyam. And Veda, Veda says that they alone are the real brahmanas and they alone help one gaining liberation. Therefore, you cannot quote achara as in your support. That is the argument Vyasacharya gives to Jay, Purvima. Now we'll go to the word analysis. Tulyam tu darshana is the sutra. Darshanam chathu. His scriptural reference is indeed. Scriptural reference is indeed tulyam. A common support. Both are. It is tulyam to both. This is the running meaning. Now let us see the signals of the words. Darshanam. Darshanam refers to Shruti Pramanam or Shruti Vakyam. You also quote a Shruti Vakyam. I also quote a Shruti Vakyam. Tulyam. Shruti Vakyam is equal to both. Shruti Vakyams are, there are many, but what you quoted good, they are Tulyam. For Puro Pakshi, he quoted from Brigadarni Upanishad, third chapter, first section, first mantra. And Siddhanti quotes his own reference from various Upanishads. Eta Vadare Kalu, Amrutatvam Iti Kotva, Yagya Valkyo Vijahara. That is again Brigadarni Upanishad, fourth chapter. And Yakshyamano Vai Bhagavan Taha Hamasmi, again it's a Chandogya quotation from the fifth chapter. These are all various quotations Acharya gives. Therefore, this sutra refuted the third Purupakshi sutra of this Adhikaram. Now, as I told you, Vyasa Acharya systematically refutes each one of the arguments given by Jaimini, Purumi Vamsaka. So, second sutra was the first argument of Jaimini that was refuted. The next one is refuted here. Now, let us go to the next sutra. I think I can finish one more. Asarvatrikhi. Asarvatriki is the 10th Sutra of 4th Pada, 3rd chapter, 435th Running Brahma Sutra. So the refutation of the objection is continued here again. So this specially refutes Sutra number 4. Two, second and third are other refuted. Now the 4th Sutra is being refuted here. First, what is the 4th Sutra? Tachrutehe. That was the 4th Sutra in this particular Pada itself. And that is the Purumimamsa Sutra. And there is a Shruti Vakyam, he says that Vidya 
goes along with karma. That is what he quoted. Purva Mimamsa quoted that Vidya Jnanam, Atma Jnanam goes along with karma. He quoted the first chapter, first section, 10th mantra of Chandogya. And that mantra, what it says, it's very clear that Vidya reinforces the efficacy of karma. Yadeva Vidyaya Karoti, Shraddayam, Upanishadam, Tadeva Viryavattaram Bhavati. That's what it said. It is clear that Atma Jnanam is karma, is part of the karma. So Vidyaya Karoti, if a person does it with knowledge, Sraddhaya Upanishadha Tadeva Viryavattaram Bhavati, it gives efficacious results. And Vyasacharya says that it uses the word Vidyam and it has not said Atma Jnanam. It used the word Vidya that is correct, but it doesn't say Atma Jnanam. Vidya should be understood according to the context. That is what again Vyasacharya reinforces here. In Upanishad, Vidya is used in two different meanings. We have mentioned this earlier in some other context. One is Saguna Brahma Upasana is also called Vidya and another is called Nirguna Brahma Jnana. So Saguna Brahma Upasana is also called Vidya and Nirguna Brahma Jnana is also called Vidya. So even if there is a sec word Nirguna Brahma Upasana, let us understand hypothetically, let us say, I said Nirguna Brahma Jnana. So even if there is a word Nirguna Brahma Upasana, that it should be taken as Nirguna Brahma Jnana only. The moment you use the word Nirguna Brahman, you use the word Jnana, not Upasana. The question is, even if it is said somewhere, we have to understand Upasana as Jnana. So the question is, which meaning one should take in the context while taking the meaning of the word Atma Jnana? That is the question. So in Chandogya, first chapter, first month, first section, the 10th mantra that I just read, we come to know that it is in the context of Upasana alone and Nirguna Jnana starts only after chapter 6. This I have mentioned very clearly. First to five chapters of Chandogya talk about only Upasanas. Chapter 6 onwards, Tatumasi, from that chapter onwards, only we are getting about Jnana. So if you go to the first chapter, Chandogya talks about Udgita Upasana. And therefore, this mantra refers to Saguna Upasana only and not at all. Not all Saguna Upasana, but it refers to the Saguna Udgita Upasana. All these distinctions we made already clearly. So it talks about not Stenis Upasana, Saguna Udgita Upasana. And one cannot take that mantra out of context and quote that mantra wrongly. That is Vyasacharya's contention. So the word Vidya does not refer to all forms of Vidya. It refers to Saguna Udya Upasana, that Vidya alone. So now let us see the word analysis of this Mahal Sutra also before I conclude. Asarvatriki. So Asarvatriki means the Chandogya statement quoted by, by the Purupakshi, Purumimamsa here, is not applicable to all Vidyas. Now let us see the signature of the words. Asarvatriki, so Sarvatriki means applicable to all and Asarvatriki means not applicable to all, in all cases. And all cases means what? All types of Vidyas. We have to, we have to understand this context. All cases means all types of Vidyas which means Saguna Upasana and Nirguna Jnana. You should not uniformly extend and you should take it as applicable according to context. So here in this case, Saguna Vidya only. And you should note that the context there is Udgita Upasana. When the first chapter, first section, first month, tenth mantra where we talked about in Chandogya, that it talks about only Udgita Upasana, Saguna Upasana only. You should not bring Nirguna Jnana in that context. It is Saguna Upasana, Udgita Upasana. Don't bring Nirguna Jnana there. And all this is because the Upanishad has used the word Vidya loosely, of course. In all the cases, Sagunam and Nirgunam. And we have to understand the meaning according to the context. So that is the contention here. So one should not confuse between Saguna Upasana and Nirguna Jnana. This is the contention of Vyasacharya to clarify Spurumamsa's contention from the third, third sutra of that, this particular father. With this, the fourth sutra is also over. Now let us go to the next sutra, sutra number 11 in the next class. Yo Veda Dauswara Prokto Vedante Chapratishtitaha Tasya Prakatili Nasaya Parasamaheshwaraha Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishate Om Shanti 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 Him 
ஸ்ரீ குருபியோ நம